That's right. Rain delays across the board. Didn't stop high school football. Week two of high school action. We're calling it week one because what's well, time anyways? Only time we care about here is what happens in between the whistles. Plenty of that. So let's get to it. It's the battle of the bone kicking off kind of non-conference rivalry week here. Van Buren and Alma early on. Braden Allen hits Connor Stacy and he's tackled after a short gain for the Airedales. Still driving Allen again. This time he finds the wrong team. That's Malachi Henry. He picks him off. This one was all Van Buren from there on out. Gary Phillips, you've heard his name for three years on FFN now. He looks around, can't find anyone, scrambles to his right. That's all she wrote. He's going to take it himself for a long 60 plus yard quarterback run touchdown. It's seven nothing pointers at this point. Phillips again this time finds Jaden Henry in his second year since transferring from Shiloh. Wide receiver does what he does best picks up the first down. Little defense, Alma trying to build a hard-nosed brand under Rusty Bush. That's Logan Cronister gets the sack. And then Phillips again, this time hits Andrew Hammond. But this one would be all Van Buren for the third year in a row. The pointers take the battle of the bone by a final score of 35 to nothing. Of course, why have one big rivalry game when you can have two? It wasn't just the bone being battle over tonight. It was also a little shindig down Highway 62. That, of course, is the battle of Highway 62, Prairie Grove and Farmington. This one got started late thanks to Lightning and is, in fact, still going on. Early in the first, it's Knox Laird. He hits his wide receiver for a huge pass. Prairie Grove pulling some tricks out in their first game of the season. Danny Absher looking for his 200th career victory in this one. Now it's Laird again. This time it goes in for six. And after a failed extra point, it's six nothing Tigers. Knox Laird once again. This time he hits Grant Cade. He's brought down inside the 30. That drive would end with nothing, though. Now it's Farmington trying to get anything going. Offense struggled last week. It would do so again this time around. A completed pass there, but the Cardinals still would go into the break down just six to nothing. Prairie Grove, another pass. We're seeing more passing from the Tigers than perhaps ever before. This time, though, it's going to be a sack. Farmington defense came up huge last week, and that's what kept them in the game this time. It's actually still going on. They're in the third quarter right now. Farmington on top, 7-6. to six. Be sure to stay tuned to all forms of social media afterwards because that's where we'll bring you the final for this one. Again, lightning delays. Farmington Prairie Grove still going on. Did I say uh, just two? That's my bad, guys. We've got a veritable cornucopia of rivalry games tonight, including a nail-biter between Boonville and Ozark when we get back. Few small schools have found as much success in recent years as Boonville and Ozark, and both do so all clad in purple. Such similarities can only breed contempt, and that's how you get a good rivalry, and they tore it up tonight. This one going down, battle down I-40, or to pick things up in the third, Randon Ray. You guys know that name. He's a highlight regular here. It's short touchdown for Boonville. Ozark still leads 19 to 14. Then Ozark, well, they're trying to run down the clock. That's Harper Falkenberry. He gets knocked out of bounds after a short game. And now Ozark again trying to run clock. That's Eli Massingale. And ball is going to get knocked out, though. Here we go. All right here, ball. Oh, he goes down somewhere eventually by the Boonville ball carrier, and he's knocked out of bounds. This game, though, would go real tight real quick. Boonville, fourth quarter, it's Colton Ritchie. Great run. Ozark still on top, 19-14. to 14. And then Randon Ray again. You heard that name earlier. He takes it in. That puts Boonville on top, 20-19. to 19, And that's how this one would end. Some controversy late, but Boonville takes it 20-19 to 19 over Ozark. Greenwood kicking off for the Chris Young era. They didn't have a zero week game, so this is it. Trying to replace Rick Jones, not exactly the easiest of tasks. Things off to a good start though. Joe Trusty finds his trusty running back Hunter Wilkinson out of the backfield in the first quarter. Greenwood already up seven nothing in this one. It's about to get bigger. There's Wilkinson again. He takes it right up the middle, carries half the south side team into the end zone. 14 to nothing Greenwood in the first quarter. Guess what? It's still the first quarter. It's still Greenwood.
uh, do in the scoring. This one lofted to the back of the end zone. Luke Brewer comes down two feet in bounds. That's a touchdown. 20 to nothing. Greenwood early in the first. Southside would try to get something going here. You're going to see Bailey Proctor go up for it along the side. He gets two hands, two feet in. But in the end, Greenwood just too much. That much. They roll Southside 42 to three, and the Chris Young era with the Bulldogs starts off with a victory. I told you guys we're going to get more rivalry games, and here we go. This one makes a little kid inside everyone happy because he got Pirates battling Dragons. It's Cedarville and Mountainburg. Third quarter, Cade Spradling for Mountainburg. Nice little run there. Cedarville on top, though, 22 to 6. Then later on in the third, look, an eye out for Bryce Calhoun on the defensive side for Cedarville. He picks it off. He goes up the sideline for a nice little return. And this one, that was pretty much all Pirates. Still the third quarter, Noah Johnson. Johnson now going back to pass for Mountainburg. That Cedarville defense, though, oh, just too good. He's that's a running back. He's taken down behind the last scrimmage for a loss. And now it's going to be Caleb Franklin. He's trying to get something going for the Dragons. This one, another one that was affected by rain. They called this because of safety concerns due to lightning, with Cedarville leading 34 to 6 in just the third quarter. But lightning wraps that one up with a pirate victory. They get to keep the trophy. Oh, well, don't worry, big schools. We didn't forget about you. Late starts abound, but we've got highlights for the 7A coming up next. Pushback start times a lot. We did have a battle of Central versus West with North Little Rock coming to Harbor. Let's get into it. This game, another one that's still ongoing, but we'll show you what we got so far. Things started off real well for North Little Rock. Charging Wildcats, first possession. That's Cotton to Stewart in the air. Easy touchdown, 7-0 North Little Rock early going. Harbor would fumble and then have to punt, but North Little Rock gives it right back. Braylon Williams, he comes down with the interception for the Wildcats and a little bit of momentum on Harbor's side. Now they'd immediately capitalize. Drew McClendon, this one's designed for the QB all the way. Bounces off one, skips past another. Nothing but open field in front of him. 65-yard touchdown run. That tied it up at 7-7 seven to seven in the first. And there's been a lot of scoring since then. They're at halftime of this one right now with Harbor in the lead, 21-17. to 17. And, of course, we'll keep you updated online once that finally goes final. Now another Central versus West battle. This one happening over in the center part of the state as Bentonville travels to take on Conway. Early on, all Tigers. Andrew Edwards dumps it off to Sean Anderson. He gets it down inside the red zone. And then Edwards again from short. He barrels across the line. Tigers up 7 to nothing. Conway, the Wampus Cats, you know they got something in them. The pitch, Boogie Carr, he gets a quick first down before he's brought down by Bentonville. And now Conway finishes it off. Jaden Williams, he high steps past a couple defenders into the end zone. Touchdown, Conway, that game tied at seven. Wampus Cats would get it right back. It's Jamal Bethune. He somehow comes out of a string of ball of tacklers in the back of the end, uh, backfield, keeps his feet going forward, falls into the end zone, 14 to seven Conway. But that's not how this one would finish up. Benville, your defending 7A West champions a few times over, starts off their season with a big win over Conway. And finally, yet another battle of out of its out of state schools. This time it's Fayetteville playing host to old friend Bill Blankenship and Owasso. Early on, all Owasso. Seth Hammer hits Trey Goins for a touchdown. And then it's gonna happen again. Hammer this time. It fakes like he's going to do something. Instead, takes it himself for a chunk of yardage. And this another one, this game at halftime as well as Fayetteville trails Owasso 24 to 14. That wraps up another Football Friday night. As always, if you missed a highlight or want to see a final score, be sure to head to our website. That's 5newsonline.com. Keep an eye for Sweetest Play. That comes Monday. Good night. Oh, yeah.